$225 billion. That's the conservative estimate of how much intellectual property theft in China cost U.S. companies each year, according to a 2017 investigation from the National Bureau of Asian Research. That's like an entire year of revenue for Amazon disappearing into thin air. Theft of IP and trade secrets is one cause of friction between the two countries' governments, and it's a major factor in the trade war that has been raging for the past several years. Many economists doubt the efficiency of President Trump's use of tariffs and reject his claim that a trade deficit is bad for the U.S. But at the same time, those same economists will explain that China has been using some unfair trade practices, including the IP theft I mentioned at the beginning of this video. In this video, I'll walk through four of the legitimate problems that the U.S. has raised with China through the years all of which are issues that are currently on the negotiating table in the trade war. IP theft and forced technology transfers cost U.S. companies billions in China every year. The report I mentioned from the Bureau of Asian Research, linked in the description, cites several different ways IP is stolen in China. Many U.S. companies are forced to develop their IP in China or transfer their IP in exchange for access to China's enormous market. Some analysts also claim that the Chinese government helps subsidize companies with Chinese connections to invest in and acquire U.S. companies that have valuable IP, especially in the tech sector. For example, one company with suspected ties to Beijing, Avatar Integrated Systems, was able to acquire Atop Tech, a U.S. firm on the cutting edge of computer chip technology. Despite the firm's shady connections, the transaction went through with no assessment from the U.S. committee charged with overseeing foreign acquisitions of sensitive tech. The Bureau's report also claims that the Chinese government conducts and supports cyber attacks against U.S. companies. A second major problem the U.S. has identified in China's economic practices is a tendency to support major Chinese companies with subsidies in violation of World Trade Organization rules. A widely cited example of this practice dates back to 2010, when the American United Steelworkers Union filed a complaint with the U.S. Trade Representative's office. The complaint claimed that China was quickly gaining dominance in the global green energy industry through state subsidies, tax credits, cheap loans, and other policies. Because on its face and on its facts, it isn't a market economy. We talked about state-owned enterprises and a question that the ambassador asked. We know that they're building state-owned enterprises not just in China, they're building them here in America to compete with us, state-owned enterprises that aren't even designed to make a profit. We know they're doing it in Brazil, we know they're doing it in other countries. And the union argued that these policies violated WTO rules. These kinds of practices from China aren't limited to the renewables industry. Tax benefits and government-controlled and funded investments are also helping to develop China's computer chip industry and other industries. Third. Some accuse China of currency manipulation. China has had a history of devaluing its currency, which makes its manufactured goods cheaper and more attractive for other countries to buy. According to the New York Times, many economists agree that China devalued its currency for significant periods between 2003 and 2013, at great benefit to its own economy, but with negative effects for the US. A lower value for its currency would also help China in avoiding some of the worst effects of the tariffs that the Trump administration has imposed. Lastly, China has severely restricted the capability of U.S. companies to invest in China over the past decades. This might be the complaint that China has been most effective in addressing. Over the past few years, Xi Jinping's administration has announced plans to scrap limits on foreign investment and ownership in some sectors, including automotive and aircraft production, finance, and insurance. And they have already begun implementing some of these changes as part of the early trade agreements with the US. So it looks like Trump's tariffs have had some success in pressuring the Chinese government into lifting restrictions on foreign investment, but it remains to be seen whether or not they can improve the other problems that I described above. Let me know in the comments if you think Trump's strategy is a good or bad one. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video and remember to subscribe.